Good morning, folks. SDO and Helio Viewer are back online and updating, but unfortunately, we don't have all the missing data from the downtime. There is a large gap in data, which is seen as that jump forward in the sun. At least it is back up now, especially because the solar flares are continuing. A couple more the last few hours in the same pattern as yesterday, still firing CMEs and turning to face Earth. NOAA showing how the previous eruptions are just outside of being geo-effective, but that likely ends today if more eruptions come as the sunspots are creeping towards center disk and they maintain magnetic complexity with the negative umbras along the southern edge of the central positive corridor through the active region. Looking at the solar wind, we see orange, the density, rising quickly the last few hours. No magnetosphere effects, but the plasma is causing increased absorption in our upper atmosphere. We've eyed the coronal holes incoming as the markers of our next quake watch, especially with Venus readying to conjoin Saturn in the next few days. Quakes ticked back up last night as a large tremor struck Papua New Guinea. USGS has it listed at 6.6, .6, but that may not entirely jive with the full readings list here. Greece went above average as well, and Iceland keeps rumbling. One in Guatemala as well, and the swarm at the border of Oregon and Nevada continues without flinching eyes open. Terrific new article and visuals out by JPL. The universe is brighter than expected. They discuss how they think things got to where they are now, but more importantly, they show you how they detect the different forms of light and what they look for to make such determinations. Link is found below this video along with our latest special. If you get some extra time, check out our interview with Bonnie Faulkner over at Guns and Butter. She was great, the climate change discussion was great, and I'd appreciate you sending your comments on that page thanking her for her time and giving any input you have. Finally, if you're unfamiliar, I'd like to introduce the Earth Observatory Global Maps. You can lose an entire day on this page if you're not careful, even before you figure out that these can be run as animations. Cyclone warnings, now screaming out from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. It's been interesting to watch this form for days on end. We're also monitoring development in the East Pacific. North of that, however, Nuri has left the Japanese latitude and headed for the North Pacific. This will contribute to phenomenal storm and wave conditions in these waters. Please be safe if you are Aleutian bound. Meanwhile, High pressure clears the southeast, leaving us to focus on the Pacific moisture flow, which still hasn't stopped for a while now. It gets caught up in two different lows, trekking eastward and delivers our watch zones to the north tonight. Also note, the second Arctic blast of the season is on its way. In Europe, we've got those two systems in familiar places. Each is a strong low right now, keeping the cloud lines to their wind drive. And while precipitation and flood potential will be widespread, the storm zones are not. Top convergence down under is easily visible at the southern coastline. It's where the largest cloud line is. Meanwhile, smaller convergences are seen across the northern portions of the nation, and that's likely our storm area with the addition of equatorial heat. Got some shots of our star to close. It's 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.05 a.m. Central, and we're heading to San Antonio for tomorrow's event. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.